Welcome to the Steps of Baking series, consisting of 13 videos in which we will be talking about each of the single steps of baking, starting from weighing your ingredients and finishing with cooling your bread down after baking. Sometimes overlooked and not given a second thought, each step of the baking process is just as important as the next, and each step will affect the next step and also the end result. So if you want to be in control and succeed at every bake, keep watching. So the first step of baking, scaling. And why is it called scaling? Because we have to use scales to weigh our ingredients. Flour, water, yeast and salt, anything that you add to your bread should be weighed on scales. Measuring by volume is extremely inaccurate. A lot of times people may think, okay, milliliters is probably the same as grams, right? But that could not be further from the truth, so let's test this out. I will pour in 200 milliliters of water in this jug and we'll see how much it weighs. Various ingredients have various densities, so by volume they might be the same, but their weight will be dramatically different. So as you can see, the jug says 200, the scales say 225. And you may think, okay, I'll just go on Google, type in the milliliters and convert it to grams, because there are plenty of converters out there. You can do that, right? So let's test this out with some teaspoons and tablespoons. What you gotta remember, this is not a standardized measuring method, and every manufacturer of a measuring implement will make theirs slightly different. So Google says that one teaspoon of yeast is 3.15 grams. So let's grab this teaspoon and see what it weighs. And yes, it turns out that this is correct, more or less anyways. The thing is that you will never get a perfect teaspoon every single time. It may be heaped, it might not be full enough, so there's always a chance of error. But let's test this out with some salt. Now salt can really vary massively in density, be it small crystals or large sea salt flakes. Some will be lighter, some will be heavier. So let's have a look. Google says that one teaspoon of salt is five grams. So let's try the sea salt. It has quite large flakes and it's quite light in texture. And one teaspoon of this particular salt is 3.8 grams. And that 1.2 grams that is missing will make a massive difference when you're baking bread. So let's check this fine table salt. This feels a lot heavier and it's a lot more densely packed. And as you can see, one teaspoon of this is 6.2 grams. So whilst you could kind of trust the spoons whilst measuring yeast, the salt measurements were way off. So let's try this with some flour. In my right hand, I have some rye flour. In my left hand, I have some strong white bread flour. They have different densities and they may have different moisture content as well. So let's see what half a tablespoon of rye flour weighs. And these two flowers feel quite similar actually when you handle them. So a perfectly level half a tablespoon of rye flour is 4.2 grams. Okay, I don't know if that's good or bad. So let's put that back in the jar. Let's try the other flour, the white flour. So we're out the scales, grab half a tablespoon, try to level it as well as we can. And as you can see, this weighs five grams. So there's almost a 20% difference between these two flours. And that would make a huge difference when baking bread. So the lesson is, just get yourselves some digital scales. They're so cheap these days, you don't really have an excuse. So the first step of baking, scaling, will affect every following step until the end result. And if you don't do it correctly, you'll be on the wrong track straight from the beginning. Click the link on the screen to learn about all the next steps and thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.